the hell is going on? On six signs of monarch mind control. Bizarre meltdowns. Shady. You know, people don't believe the mind control stuff, but you got to remember. Well, John, wouldn't there be malfunctions and blah, blah, blah? And they, they I mean, it's 2022. You, they mastered it in World War II. That's why MK Ultra is spelled MK, mind control the K. This is a German thing. Yeah. yeah. Although they might don't like it, eh? from various sources uh, that many, many prominent individuals, including actors, actresses, professional football and baseball players, are involved in these type activities. The first sign that your favorite pop star might be under mind control is the presence of mysterious shadowy controllers known as handlers. Uh-oh. No figure in the realm of MK Ultra lore sparks more speculation than the elusive Handler. Notable figures from Ellen DeGeneres to Bob Hope have been alleged to be Handlers. Often disguised as security or entourage members, Handlers manage an MK Ultra slave on behalf of whatever secret society or intelligence agency they belong to. These individuals are entrusted with special code words and triggers to control the slave ensuring victims are in the right places when required and calling forth the correct altars. The idea that a personality inside, uh, say again, there's 35 personalities inside, they all have triggers or names and codes and so forth, and a handler knows this. Uh, they may have a little black book or on computer disk, whatever, uh, you know, uh, probably encrypted or whatever, but they know that the, they know who to, you know, when they contact. Now, we've seen it where they've called and played dial tones over the phone. And that is triggered out, or a phrase, or even a card sit in the mail, or timed triggers when 11 o'clock hits, uh, another personality would come up and take over the body and take the body out to a ritual site or to a handler. So inside personalities, runners and informers and those who have been created to be bonded with uh, handlers, MK Ultra victims are trauma bonded to their handlers, meaning they will view them with a sense of affection. If a celebrity victim has a breakdown or switches altars unexpectedly, the handler is there to put them back in line. When MK slaves reach a certain age, they sometimes are given the opportunity to become handlers themselves, offering them a chance to regain some of the power they lost and fulfilling the victim to abuser cycle. Handlers ensure the slave is kept in a bubble, isolated from any outside influences. During a lawsuit, it was revealed that Britney Spears' one-time handler, Sam Lufty, cut the phone lines and removed all cell phone chargers at the singer's mansion. The, the term handler, um, as, as a handler, uh, this person who, or individual, or half demon sort of person would inflict control upon your life who is controlling them the handlers that i had were associated with the cia but most of all my owner in mk ultra mind control was u.s senator robert c bird and senator bird directed my activities he's the one who decided who my handlers would be Whoa. And he chose different handlers for certain purposes. My first handler, for example, was for trauma. My second handler was primarily for being able to travel throughout the United States and the Caribbean and Mexico, Canada, and the country music industry. 
So he chose them according to what they could provide. And as a handler, they followed Senator Byrd's orders, but they were already still associated with the CIA. These Bengali figures have long been a staple of Hollywood stardom. Legendary entertainer Bob Hope has been alleged by multiple victims to be a handler himself. After I fled from California, I began having vivid detailed memories of being used as a sex slave to some of our nation's highest level government officials and top entertainment professionals such as my owner, Bob Hope. Frank Sinatra was Bob Hope's friend, and he actually was um, the person that was in charge of me a lot when I was in Las Vegas on assignment. The band Muse, whose lyrics often contain references to government conspiracies and occult ideas, wrote a song about MK Ultra handlers called Handler. The music video is filled with MK Ultra monarch symbolism. One telltale sign of mind control is the glitch or mal Yo, send me that music video. malfunction. <clears throat> These bizarre mess-ups are usually caught on live TV or captured by private cameras. Most celebrity appearances are carefully planned slash rehearsed by agents and publicists, making sure not to hurt the star's brand. However, no technology is perfect, and sometimes an entertainer's mind control breaks down during the live appearance and we get a glimpse of the truly bizarre behavior these people demonstrate behind closed doors. <laughs> I gotta talk to my hand there, hold on. Uh, I was a little down, I, I found out Fulcher that I had to have surgery again, or, or you know, you know, with another knee. But at the end of the day, you know, I have, I have amazing teammates. You know, guys like Draymond, everybody on this team, but... I'm feeling great, I feel nervous, a little bit overwhelmed. I feel a little shaky, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me. No, no, but it's good, no, it's good, it's good, it's good, you're going to get good, it's good, it's good, it's good. People of Australia and of our show, we were very empathetic about what happened and very sort of horrified. And so we were wondering, how is everyone going and how's Kim doing? Um, what? Okay. I'm sorry, is there someone talking to you? Yes, sorry. Sorry about that. So I just was wondering it how just everyone's came doing. In. I thought it was just because she's. Hello, Courtney, have, you, have we lost you? A glitch typically occurs when a victim suddenly switches to another altar. Sometimes a trigger word is unwittingly used and they are suddenly thrown into another mode, so to speak. The most famous live glitch was Al Roker's notorious freezing incident during a taping of the Today Show. At Lauer and Al Roker, well, someone don't did rub it, it in. the junior high hot dance. Don't rub it in. It looks like yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta make it real awkward. Well, that's exactly how you he did. You have to have a certain amount of distance between yes, the bodies exactly. in junior high. Yes, like they say in Catholic school, leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of uh, memories today. Actually, it's a big day in music history. Thirty-five years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away. The that would make sense because every time they do mind control, they do it with <clears throat> talking about Satan and Beelzebub and all that shit to spook the victim. Another sign of MK Ultra is the existence of alternate identities, and while this condition may be relatively rare in the normal world. It's surprisingly common. By the way, this is why people cry for no reason. In today's society, Zoomers, millennials just start crying for no reason. Because read the studies of LSD, magic mushrooms, acid, those kind of drugs, and what they actually are doing to the brain. Right? Since the sexual revolution, they shatter the mind even at low doses. They puncture the mind at very low doses. And that's where all that crying comes from. That <clears throat> In the twisted realm of the entertainment industry. Beyonce has Sasha Fierce. Nicki Minaj has Roman Zelensky. And Britney Spears has a British-speaking alter. Roman is a crazy boy who lives in me. And he says the things that I don't want to say. I think he was born out of rage. He was conceived in rage. 
Yeah, there, there's some mystics who talk about some more modern day mystics who talk about. Oh, excuse me. There was Manny P. Hall in his free the Freemason Manny P. Hall, right? The famous author. He has this book talking about what a heroin addict is, and he says modern science explains it as da 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 chemicals, but we are led to believe it's actually a former heroin addict's soul. Which doesn't really make sense because then what about the first heroin addicts? Like who entered them? Well, then I guess they explain it with a demonic force, but apparently when people die of a heroin overdose, they can enter a new body. They, this guy's like famous and not a lunatic. This guy who said this, he says when the heroin addict dies, he enters a different body to that that makes the other guy an addict. So like who, what is in Slicker's brain right now? We don't know. Have like an ignorant loudmouth who you can just sort of blame every. He wants to be blamed. I don't want to blame him. I, I I ask him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. People have brought him out. People conjured him up. Now he won't leave. <clears throat> it's you. You know, it's really amazing. I, I can't describe it. It's just something that that takes over me and and we named it Sasha because it's like two different people for me and I love performing but I think I'm I'm a little boring in, in real life you're not and boring. if people saw that they'd be like okay why did I pay my money to see this show <laughs> so I've kind of created this character and it's it's I, I lose myself completely yeah. I don't even remember what I do when I'm performing with Britney Spears, so you just do the same thing. Go to YouTube. Favorite singer? I don't know. The not gay one? I don't know. Britney Spears, alter ego. And uh, she's coming along in a car. She's leaning out the window. And she's got a pink wig on. And she's talking in a British accent. And she says that she has no idea who this guy is that the reporters have asked her about. Who's her boyfriend that she's been dating for like the last six weeks or something. Huh. And the, the paparazzi say they always know they're in for a show when she comes out with a pink wig on. But then shortly after that, she's interviewed. She's not wearing the pink wig. She's not talking a British accent. And she says, well, yeah, that guy's my boyfriend. I know him. Different altars are used for the various roles they will perform for their masters. The most prevalent and identifiable altar represented among entertainers Oof. is the beta sex kitten altar. Betas are sexual slaves. This is so hot to me. They, they, when they got the leopard print, cat-like behavior, betas, like a kitty cat. This drives me nuts, bro. I'm just like, oh, I'm fapping, I'm fapping, I'm fapping all day. Oh. And I always wondered why. Why does it drive me so nuts? I'm not a kinky guy. But it drives me nuts. It makes me want to, like... Do very, very not Zerka stuff to someone, you know? But it's because I've been subverted by the mainstream media, of course. They had to have done something in my brain. <clears throat> not a furry, man. Come on. This programming erases all learned moral convictions and stimulates the primitive sexual instinct, devoid of reservations or inhibitions. Sex kitten symbolism is a staple of monarch mind control. And Dude, there's nothing hotter than a beta woman in the bed. You, when you, you know, like when you like, you know what I mean? When you're like about to smash and she's just beta as like, wow. People talk about a switch and a, wow, dude, wow, man, wow is found with disturbing frequency in mass media and pop culture. What the f Something that I learned about is another expression of MKUltra-style mind control programming, which goes alongside monarch programming, 
It's known as Beta Sex Kitten Programming, and it's symbolized by big cats. So when you see leopards or tigers or lions, any other members of the big cat family, it's often a symbolic rendering of the presence of this particular style of programming. And a lot of these personnel... Why would a grown man do a whole lecture on this stuff unless it's real? Like, why would these intelligent men spend all this time talking about it unless it's actually real? Right? Jill said you sucked her toes. No, but if we're talking about a beta, it, dude, my Jilly, man. What a beta. What a pretzel you are, young lady. You are a pretzel. Wow. That is some good sessions. Wow. Wow. I have never in my life been happier than with that streamer girl. Wow. Oh my God. I'm talking about any time. I could wake up in the middle of the night and be like, I want some. And I always get it. That girl's going to heaven. That girl is going. I could be in public and want it and I'll get it. That girl's going to heaven, dude. Everyone in the chat to pray for that girl. That girl's going to heaven, man. The way she has blessed me. And all I do is yell at her and do everything wrong. But wow, when I'm live, am I grateful? Like, I just think of my life and it's like, wow, dude. Wow. I should be angry too. She'd be like, I don't want to leak, but it's just like, dude, man, how do I get so blessed to be around just like such, wow, dude, like, Last trip, ish, 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 that's not like me to do that much, man. I'm usually like, I just bust and go, but I was like, ish, 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 ish. Wow. I'm telling you, man, someone like me, and when I first got involved with her, I just could not do it. We were having awkward moments and just we kept stopping. It was just like, you know, when you don't smash for like a year and a half because you're streaming and you found God and you just can't do it. And you feel like it opens up demonic portals and take a while, took a while, kept trying, kept trying. And now it's like, ish, 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 like, right, like, like now it's like, oh, my God, to see. How there's like pain and soreness. Like I feel bad of how much I smash, you know, where it's like when it's that sore, just leave her alone. But what a generous, what a generous, what a generous spirit partner. Like, dude, I just want to lift her up and put her into the shelf of heaven. And just leave me alone. Because like, when I tell you guys, ah, I forgot I even like sex. Don't you have ED? Yeah. Yeah. It was a problem in the beginning, but it, it went away. Yeah. Because I, I think too much and, uh, <clears throat> But she's just done a lot of stuff to show that she's, like, better than me. So, you know when someone's on your team, man, you just... I don't know. That's a lot of fun, man. 
because I was trying so hard in the beginning. It got cringe when we were fucking for God, right? And then I'm like, all right, we're done. Now we're like, now it's gross. Now it's like, now it's like this, this, it's like this. Worse than the pornos. Now it's like we are completely possessed when we do it. Now it's so demon, demonic. And then I just pray after because I'm like, that got out of hand. Like, you know, if people saw that, her and I would be in jail. That's how far we're taking it. Like the words I'm saying are so illegal to her it's like I've never been in this <laughs> when I was a degen I wasn't this bad no anal what the fuck I'm not freaks no 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 I'm not a freak show bro I like the box do you eat the box no no but we overcompensate on a lot of that like can I tell you guys what I say when I'm smashing like she's a shy girl, so I'm like, it's all me. I'll take it, dude. What I say is, think of the worst word that you can't say on Twitch. Yeah. Save this VOD and incriminate me in the future, dude. Just be like, he admit. Dude, like, it is crazy. Abracadabra, get the f*** out of here with your black magic. No, I don't call her the N-word. What? How did we get here? What am I... What are you hearing? <laughs> what are you talking about? That's How is that hot? What are you talking about? No, I was thinking of... All right, whatever. Whore, no, way worse than that. It's like, now that she believes that I care about her, now it's like, I'm saying way worse. Now I can get away with a lot. What is the K word? What are you talking about? For Jewish people? What the hell? Guys. I was talking. All right, never mind. I was talking about outside the law, but never mind. Realities will not live in reality. They live in a total science fiction world. They've been dehumanized. Here's how one of Cisco's alters perceived herself. There are some physical indicators of someone having been a victim. No, she calls me Mein Führer when we're doing it. No, I'm kidding. I'm just saying. Never mind. Like, there's this type of play that sounds very satanic when two people really trust each other. You called her Muhammad Atta? What the fuck? If my kink was to dress up like a certain fascist, is that like kink shaming? I don't know. Yeah, we do fruit play. I don't know where it came from, but as soon as like we realize we trust each other, we don't leak each other, we're like, let's just do some. I just brought some pears in the room. You call her slicker? No, I don't, dude, come on, that's a little too dirty. Come on, dude. Victim of MK Ultra mind control. Have you ever noticed that some people have one eye that appears wider or more pronounced than the other? According to author and researcher... What the... F that's my eyeball, too. Fritz Springmeyer, this can be an indicator. A no, I don't put a banana in here. Bro, never mind, man. No. Fruit play as in, like... Like Roman emperor's fruit. Yeah. There you go. Another is blonde hair. For some reason, blonde hair plays an important role in the realm of the elite. 
many stars under MK Ultra mind control are forced to dye their hair or wear a blonde wig. After a meltdown, Britney Spears shaved her blonde hair off in an attempt to prevent further abuse. Still. Bradley, did she say why? I mean, did she yes. offer any information? They, they asked why she wanted to shave her head, and she said, I don't want anyone touching me. I'm tired of everybody touching me. Uh, another employee there. John, how do you not notice what you're saying is demonic or do you not care? I believe in honesty. I don't like pretending I'm a different person when I'm live. So if I say bad stuff, it means like <clears throat> that I'm actually living that way, right? Like I live a holy life and try. I cope. I cope. Told Us Magazine, she wasn't making sense at all and you could tell she's not in a good place at all and that she's totally freaking out. In the shadow world of the Illuminati, symbolism is the secret language that unites insiders. Monarch mind control is no exception, possessing its own unique codes of signs and symbols that to the outsider may seem irrelevant, but those in the know will immediately recognize. The most obvious reference is the monarch butterfly. I'm the, I'm the, I'm like, Hassan Piker's nickname is the Cope Pope. This is total bullshit, John. Who believe, one in the chat, if you believe this mind control stuff is happening with some of these guys. Self, which has become a de facto symbol for victims of this type of mind control and is found throughout the entertainment industry, from movies to album covers. Them on my dress, there's a lot of butterflies. There's a lot of symbolism. You gotta just kind of catch it. We're trying to put a lot of subliminal things in there, too. Whoa. Victims identify with butterflies because of the fluttering feeling that accompanies dissociation. Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland are standard monarch programming scripts, and as such, each has come to represent mind control. Do you think they made the script before mind control and then they just used the TV show? Or was the TV or the movie made for mind control and given push to the masses, which kind of explains why such a bad storyline is so popular. You ever wonder how such horrible storylines are completely viral as hell? Like what's a storyline that's like, doesn't make sense why it's so popular. The Wizard of Oz cannot be a better story than fighting a Leviathan or something, right? There's something about some of these stories that it's like, when I watch The Wizard of Oz, it's talking to my subconscious. It's not talking to me. <clears throat> if they're Masons, why would they need mind control also? Because a Mason actually is an initiated person who can enter a meditative trance-like state. So just because you're a Mason doesn't mean you can do that, right? Like, if, if you're a part of the club, it doesn't mean you can you actually can tap into your you know the deeper part of your consciousness you get controlled by the higher up masons who can do that the music video for don't come around here no more by tom petty is full of alice in wonderland mk ultra symbolism also notice the eerie similarity to marina abramovic's cake parties Whoa. Mirrors represent the multiple personalities living inside the victim. This is a video for Jewel by the German group Propaganda. And the shocking thing about this video is not that they're performing on a black and white checkerboard floor. There's nothing bloody surprising about that at all. But we get it later on in the video, round right about midway, where for no apparent reason you get this young girl in a nightdress and she's getting accosted and by this sea of hands. They're all reaching out and touching her, and she's clearly, you know, traumatized. It's by like the situation. Billie Eilish. What you then get is a picture of this young girl in her nightdress in the frame of a mirror. That then changes very quickly to the lead singer of Propaganda in the same mirror, and then it turns into an old lady who's holding a doll, and she uses the doll to smash the mirror. What we're seeing here is a depiction of lifelong satanic ritual abuse going from childhood all the way through to old age. And when you see shattered mirrors, 
like I said, it's indicating the presence of a shattered, fractured personality. Jeez. Do you think there's a country on Earth that doesn't have higher ups that are Freemasons, Masonic cult? Yeah, I think North Korea has very few Masons. I know they have four officials, but it's extremely low. And you'd be surprised how Russia, the Russian television does not have Masonic psychological warfare programming against its people. But Putin is is surrounded by masons it's scary how many there are around him it's insane same with china xi ping so it's like yeah they're doing better for their people that they're not showing them this imagery but they have just as many masons as the westerners so it's like how is one guy the good guy it doesn't really make sense and that's the black pill really is when you realize what it's all of them. Xi Ping is with Masons and the, uh, Arabs have so many Freemasons in the Saudi royal family. It's nuts. And here's the worst part is Freemasonry. They don't like to admit this. There's 40 pages in a row that talk about it being a religion, that it has to be a religion to the initiate. That means those Saudi families, the Chinese, the Russians, every American, Europeans, Africans, there's Freemasons in Africa. That means they're all in the same religion. That's how fake they are. They're the fakest, they're the slickers, man. No one would have believed this slicker shit a year ago. <sighs> as a result of traumatic programming. Another key symbol for this type of mind control is black and white, usually in either stripes or a checkerboard pattern. This represents the dualistic world in which slaves live. Many slaves or handlers will be dressed in black and white. There's something I, f I feel bad for... Uh... Britney Spears. I don't know why I've always felt bad for her, but I've never found her attractive, even when I was young. Something about her is very caveman to me, very square, very... I cannot explain to you. If you saw the nudes that I get, you'd say, oh my God, no wonder you think this. I have the greatest nudes ever right now. But it's satanic to focus on nudes. That's the truth. I do think there's Valley Girls much hotter than Britney Spears out there. Diamonds represent a presidential model, the highest level beta sex slave. Marilyn Monroe was the first presidential model, and as such, many MK entertainers pay homage to her in some way. Mickey Mousey... Wait a minute, let's go back. ...first presidential model, and as such... Many MK entertainers pay homage to her in some way. Is that Marilyn on the left? Because I don't think I want to shit on her. If that's Marilyn on the left, then she was beautiful. Isn't she a man? I'm kidding. That's what she looked like before plastic surgery and shit? Oh my god. Mickey Mouse ears are also symbolic of you. So how come they got Marilyn and we get Katy Perry? Like, what the fuck? Like, we live in a sad world where Kim is the hottest one we can find. That's so sad. There should be hotter. Women are just not beautiful, dude. Something about women. It's like at the top of the top, they're just not doing it for me, man. How is Kim our top tier? Like... How is she the president of beauty? That makes no sense. MK Ultra Mind Control as a reference to Disney programming. Disney. The final sign to look for is the meltdown and reprogramming. Public unraveling of yet another child star. This is Amanda Bynes we're talking about. 
Around age 27 to 28, natural changes in the brain's chemistry cause the programming to break down, which can create extremely erratic behavior. This is what is referred to as a meltdown. A meltdown may have now get off who's against masonry. Evolve over the course of several months. Britney Spears, Amanda Bynes, Shia LaBeouf, and Katy Perry are just a few of the celebs who have been said to have had an MK Ultra meltdown. Victims may begin remembering and want to rebel from his or her handler. Usually the victim is brought in for reprogramming, sometimes under the guise of rehab, or maybe they just disappear for a while. The only tweet from Lindsay Lohan during her 2013 rehab stint was a cryptic reference to Wizard of Oz and Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Google lied to you. Facebook lied to you. I spent my whole time on earth defending Kanye. To watch him do a black mage satanic rebirth ritual of achieving his Christ consciousness in front of everyone at his mother's funeral Donda event. I defended a Satanist like Kanye for the longest time. I cannot believe that's how stupid I am. After Kanye West's onstage rant back in 2016, the Grammy-winning artist was hauled away, handcuffed to a gurney. Could it yeah. Oh, yeah. This is traumatizing. Kanye. So this is what really happens with Peter, A.V., Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event, ribs and french fries. Yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter, A.V., Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event, ribs and french fries. Yeah. So this is what really happens with... Why is Kim laughing at her, at, at her husband? Peter, A.V., Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event, ribs and french fries. Yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter, A.V., Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event, ribs and french fries. This man looks like he gets off on treating black people like slaves. That's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter, A.V., Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event, ribs and french fries. And Kanye would rant about the fashion industries treating him like a slave. Remember that? He's like, I can't enter the fashion world. They're treating me like a rapper. I'm the modern day age slave. And dude, you maybe you shouldn't have done the uh, butt sex ritual to be that rich. Maybe, maybe it's not worth it. They have been secretly taken to a reprogramming center. Many theorists say yes. And point to Kanye's odd behavior and die. There's this book, this book of Hermeticism I finished that talked about how a king envies the poor man's appetite. Right? That food tastes so good to the poor and the middle class. But the king, he has digestive problems from eating and he always has enough food and he can't taste his food. And Right? He also envies how happy they can be with little whereas the king no matter how much he has it's fleeting and it goes down and that's that polarity that like this side of richness isn't as great as you think it, it's only great for the first five years i think then it, then yeah i had blonde hair upon his return tell me about kanye how's he doing have you seen him lately went to his house I was going to go back last week, but he, we couldn't get together. He had some other stuff he had to do. But I went to his house, sat down with him for about six, seven hours, and just walking through his health and recovery. His, mem his memory's coming back. Yeah, his memory's coming back. Yeah, his memory's coming back, which is super good. And now I'm just, just healing. We're used to a little bizarre behavior from celebs, but how much is really a sign of something darker? In Hollyweird, nothing is as it seems. And the signs of MK Ultra are everywhere. From ultra personalities and shadowy... Someone sent me that Freemasons marrying little boys in dresses. 
thing. On, I think I posted on Twitter. Someone send me that link. I want to show it. Controllers to troubling glitches and meltdowns. Roseanne certainly wasn't lying when she stated MK Ultra rules in Hollywood. Yeah, I mean this one's pretty believable, actually. Guys, yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter, Av, Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event: ribs and French fries. Yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter, Av, Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event: ribs and French fries. Yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter, Av, Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event: ribs and French fries. Yeah. So this is what really happens with Peter. Dude, the elite, the ruling class is so sickening. They're so creepy. Look at this guy. Av Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event: ribs and French fries. So gross, man. And so, um, I'm on a spiritual growth path. By the way, you know they're both liberal pussies, right? This guy here, Walking Dead guy that we all love. This guy went on a crybaby rant about Donald Trump. As if you don't run your house like Donald. When masculine men are pretending they don't run their house like Donald, it's pathetic. I don't care if it's your dad. I don't care who it is. It's pathetic that you run your house exactly like Donald Trump. And then you go in front of the world and say, well, he's just, he's a crazy person. He's just... He's a sexist. He's. We know what you get up to, dude. I'm on a. I mean, I mean, you are for attacking him. Uh, an excavation. I'm picking it up, cleaning it up, putting it back. You know, I didn't just hurt that woman. The kind of shame my wife has to walk around with. You know, the um, the the pain that came to the the people I was working with creatively. Even I built this like. Me and Bo built like something really special downtown and uh, and all them kids, you know, I just failed a lot of people. And so when I say I'm going to owe, it's not just her. I owe a lot of people. And um, so the reason I wanted to do this and the reason why I felt like celestial mathematics when you hit me up was it's not a lot of places I can go talk, period, you know. And um, I guess old me would have looked at this like, oh, well, this is an opportunity for you to like speak your piece. But really the only thing I want to do is like, give dudes who f up hope absolutely yeah what can what, what 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 can this achieve who can this touch victim perpetrator someone lost all someone's that. trying to be found yeah all that. who on that path pain is an adhesive bro if you've been yeah. through it yeah you can connect to people period and yeah. the story the first thing i just think like look man i haven't seen you in a long time a long bro. time and um I want to talk about that. Yeah. The first thing I just need to ask you, man, yeah. is I need to ask you about your child. Yeah. I need to ask you about your baby, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, man, yeah. tell me about your. Adults don't talk like this. This is like the cool hip teacher in school trying to sound like the kids, like the substitute cope. We don't like you substitute. We miss our original bitch. You'll never replace that bitch. Never. I don't care how much we hate the original teacher. You are you are a stepfather to us. You sick, perverted the teacher, you. I saw how you looked at Susie's tit Susie's seventeen, you sick Substitute teachers are coping to be real teachers. That's the truth. Look at this shit. Talk about that. Yeah. Come on, bro. I want to talk to you like I'm 40 years old and I'm talking to you like this, bro. When you're 40, this is how you have to talk. It seems you've gone through oceans of time to get to the end of your suffering. <laughs> And it would seem that you're a pedophile. You know what I mean? Like it's gotta be poetic. It can't forty if a forty year old guy talks to me like this, that's that's like how are you the pedophile and the victim? Pick a side, man. I haven't seen you in a long time, a long bro. Time. And um 
I want to talk about that. Yeah. The first thing I just need to ask you, man, yeah. is I need to ask you about your child. Yeah. I need to ask you about your baby, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, man, yeah. tell me about your baby. I mean, she's a, she is the most dynamic spark of life and most magical. Um, it's a game changer, dog. You know, like I, you would always talk about your kid, and I was like, yeah, well, I've had a dog, as though them like, <laughs> like as though these loves are like <laughs> anywhere near what you experience when you have a kid. But um, this was all tied in too. Like it came at, at a time when, you know, me and my girl been in love for a long time, but I didn't really know. Is Shia LaBeouf coping? Coping the chat if he coping, and should an adult wear a hat? know it you know i didn't really know what love was till all this shit hit the One fan and she was hats. still around i thought she was in love with me because of what i could offer i didn't know that when i had shit jack off all nothing to offer she would still love me so i didn't i didn't really know what love was right that's one mm -hmm. and out of this like newfound discovery of real love in my life this I, dude that is the greatest cope no woman will ever stick by you if you're broke that's never happened once in history. It's not in their DNA. Every story you've been told about that is a lie. That's never happened once, ever. That's never in the history of humanity ever happened once. That's the truth. Like, stop, dude. Why do you think men cheat on women? Men cheat because they know she'll leave if you lose your job. That's why men cheat. If men knew deep down you will never leave his side, you think that guy would cheat? That guy will never cheat. Men cheat because they know how demonic you are about all your dumb shit, man. This kid, you know, and uh, it... um. I'm not gonna pretend like I like I done figured it all out. It's yeah. such a mystery, you know. I and what, I toggled. What scares you? What, what scares, scares you? me is like enough. Nobody tells you about the first three weeks, you know. <laughs> the first three weeks, man. I remember changing the diaper. Yeah. You know, I, I've been I've been hanging out with monks for nine months, and I came out of monastery, and I'm you know I'm been in rehab for three months, and I've been working, you know, I've been outside for a while, and so I thought I had like things dialed in, like I could press the pause button, but when you're changing a diaper, and you change it and then you put it back on she shits again <laughs> and then you change it again and she shits again and it's three in the morning you ain't slept for four days and you're on the third it's the third iteration of shit and you're sitting there at the table and you change it one more time and you say to yourself if you shit one more time i'm gonna jump out the window like i'm done right and you're looking at your kid and you're just thinking how how am i gonna get through this and you you put the, the fourth diaper on and she doesn't shit, it feels like a miracle. <laughs> it feels like God is hugging you. Like, I got you, bro. So I, I, I don't know if I'm infusing a bunch of stuff, but there's- Yeah, look, I, listen, listen, I'd be a great father, but if my baby ever took a shit, I'm not dealing with that. I will, ne I swear to God, I will never change one diaper for as long as I live. I swear to God, may God strike me down with the world's lightning. I will never change one diaper my whole f life. F that baby. I will never change one diaper. That's not, I'm not put on earth to change no f diaper. Are you f joking me? That's some pussy ass, bitch ass. That is literally pathetic. That is like, oh, what the f am I, a f lady now? I just got, why don't I clean the dishes and fuck do the, all the chores and the fuck? I'm supposed, what the fuck? I got to change a diaper? Come on, man. I'll fight 10 dudes on the street, but change a diaper? That's fucking disgusting, man. That is the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. To this day, when my nephew fucking pisses or shits, I leave. I say, I'm done playing with you, bro. You can't even control your bowels, bro. You're coping. Who the f shits themselves, man? The f I know he's four, but, or three, or whatever, but it's so gross, man. I gotta change a diaper. Imagine I go to work all day and I have to change a diaper. That's some loser shit. What kind of warrior? 
What kind of warrior goes out, goes out and does everything for their family and comes home to change f diapers? That's some loser shit, man. That is like the greatest loser feeling in the world. Imagine being a man your whole life. Nobody gives you shit. You work so hard. You do everything you can to bring home the money. And then you have to do the woman part. Come on. You guys are pathetic in chat, man. Dude, I will never change a diaper for as long as I live, dude. And check it out. I'll tax. I'll t tax me. For every diaper I don't change, you can have $500. Yeah, I'll give my wife five hundred dollars for every diaper I don't change, and that kid could have that kid eat laxatives, and I don't give a fuck. I'll eat, take all my money, take every penny, but I will never change one diaper. That is the grossest, most disgusting, most degenerate activity I could imagine myself doing, man. Oh my god, that's like dealing with other humans' poop. That is so fucking gross dude that is so gross this is the reason why i can't fully babysit so when the kid shits i'm like yo come get your fucking kid bro they're being degenerate like dude there's men out there who change diapers what's the point of going a full-time job if you have to change diapers as well if <laughs> this is just so sad do you at least cheat on her <laughs> Wait, you don't cheat? You do a full-time job and you're dealing with shit? <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Oh, that is cold, man. <laughs> if I, every diaper I cheat, I'm cheating, man. Every diaper I change, I'm smashing an ugly fat bitch. Hell no, I have to deal with feces. Me as an adult have to deal with feces. I'm put on earth to deal with feces. Oh my god, dude. That is crazy. Everything else I can do. Everything else as a father I can do except that. Anything you want. But feces? Come on, man. Come on. I can d I'll deal with piss, all right? You piss on me, kid. I don't care. But shit? Come on, dude. Women are good at that because women don't get grossed out. Like women are very, no offense, but they're very like gross people. <laughs> like women can watch vomit on TV and still eat dinner. They're very like, they can handle that shit. I can't. That's, you know, women can like handle helping their friends. Oh, Becky's puking. Oh my God. And nah bro I, I if you're puking you're on your own bro i don't give a fuck who you are i i'm not going to rescue you at the club none of that shit like figure it way out home right hell no women can handle with disgust very well but men like me like royalty we don't do good with that right All, the only men who change diapers are men who eat the box <laughs> <laughs> they're like man just finished 10 hours of work oh she didn't do anything besides spend my money all day okay all right time to deal with the feces <laughs> and then i gotta eat the bugs <laughs> imagine when y'all meet god and god goes you did what you were changing feces what you didn't get your dream car what do you mean you bought her a nice bag you bought her 10 bags as you're changing diapers and eating the box? <laughs> Who the f*** do you think you were, Jesus Christ? <laughs> What'd you get in return? Oh, she cheated on you? Oh, no. Were you cheating? No? <laughs> what the f***? It's like, dude, being a man is so pathetic. The changing diapers has become the norm for men. You know what? There's this... There's something that happens in a woman's psyche where she's happy that you're helping her do the chores, but when she watches her man wash dishes, she starts to hate him. Every woman that watches their man wash dishes eventually hate their man. 
They hate seeing you do something that's not in line with conquering. They hate to see it. It's like you're giving them trauma. They're sleeping weird. They're having bad dreams. They don't know why they don't like you. They don't want to see you do chores, my dude. Get it through your skull, right? And I'm the kind of guy that I do dishes. You know, if I date a girl and I see dishes, I just, you know, like I'm not a fucking bitch. I'm not going to use her house. I will do dishes, but I will never have chores every day of doing dishes. I'll go to work and come back and sleep. That's it. I will never, I'm not a leech. I'll do dishes, but it's not going to be my job, right? That's ridiculous. Diapers will never be my job, right? And the one day she'll feel bad about guilt tripping me about diapers is the day 10 dudes come to steal that baby and I fight them. That's when I'll be like, bitch, you're useless. You didn't fight one of those guys. All right. And she'll say, okay, just leave me with the diapers. You go fight those guys. Easily. Bro, bring a hundred of them. <laughs> I would rather fight 100 men in a row than one diaper. And everyone in this chat is the opposite. You guys would rather do the diaper thing. So you guys are pathetic some kind of incredible genius in my child but she's testing me and she's mm. forcing me she's forcing me to give up on me yeah that's right which is what way i way more important yeah i mean way bigger obviously way more important but it also feels like some kind of weird reset button for sure like i know that i'm never going to be the dude i was in front of this this woman you know and i know that i'm never going to treat my wife the way that i treated her around this woman it's almost like having the ultimate parole officer yeah. It's like the ultimate probation officer. I've never looked down on having a probation officer. I need somebody to keep me accountable. Because mm -hmm. freedom without guidelines and limitations is madness. Mm -hmm. You know, if I strip you naked and throw you in the ocean, you'll be free, but you won't enjoy it. You know, you're just a my dude. That's why you have a parole officer. Okay. You know who has parole officers? Cards. Men who score extremely low on IQ and usually higher on testosterone. That's who has a parole officer. Only a retard has a parole officer. Don't ever try and normalize that. You need a babysitter in life? That You're pathetic. You're pathetic, okay? I need, I need, like, I need guidance. Mm -hmm. And my kid is serving as... You need God, because you're a satanic f okay? And I don't know what to believe. I just don't understand the characteristics of God. Is he good? Is he jealous? Is he bad? Is he... Shut the f up, man. You know, doing the right thing, you can do it passively too. You don't have to always think about what's the right thing to do. You already know. Some kind of ultimate, like, um, like North Star? Yeah, for sure, North Star, but even more than that, she's, she, first of all, my kid is so f joyful. Like, she's just always, I mean, been around. Bro, your, kid, your baby sucks. Okay, Shia? Your one-year-old baby sucks. Nobody gives a shit about your baby, okay? Nobody cares. Your baby shits themselves. Like, what a f loser. <laughs> like, go use the toilet. You shit yourself like you're an idiot? Maybe your baby needs a parole officer. Ever thought of that, rich boy? I don't like the ruling class, and I never will, all right? They're trying so hard to relate to us. But John, we all go through problems. I don't care. If you're a part of the ruling class and you're going through hell, mother keep going. I don't want you to get out of it. I don't want you healthy. I don't want you happy. Burn. Burn for the rest of your life. Okay? Burn and then you have done 1%. You've lived through 1% of what we have. Okay? You're all pedos. You've been caught as pedos. Doctors, and maybe all doctors say this, but like, I've been around doctors saying like, this is the most joyful kid I've ever been around. Right, right. You know, she's raised in complete love, and my wife is such a good mother. She's a part of a new purpose that I that I didn't have. You know, I was living for myself, and when you're holding a baby, like, baby don't care about none of your shit. You know, like, what do, what do you think being a good dad is? What what what, what are you gonna bring to the table? I'm honest. Yep. I'm loyal. Uh, I'm willing. I'm uh, open. Mm -hmm. Curious super curious and uh, uh I'm, I'm he's just throwing buzzwords what about curious huh is that relatable enough to the hard masses that watch us <laughs> how about that epstein island stuff why don't you talk about that
Shia Le, LaBeouf, Shia Le nerfed, right? Go back to rehab, ruling class pedo. I'm uh, open. <clears throat> curious. Super curious. So curious. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm learning how to, how to be a man of principles. Give voice to what you're scared of and what you're worried about. about Yo, one in the chat if these guys were on Epstein Island. Being a dad and, 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 and what you think uh, you know you need to focus on and what you're worried about with your relationship with her for the future. I'm not worried about much anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't live in fear. Mm -hmm. I don't have a bunch of worry like that. What do you need to work on? Yeah, there's a lot I need to work on. First off, just in terms of having a daughter and knowing a, your daughter is one day going to search your name in a search engine mm -hmm. and see that you, that, know, you, that you didn't support Trump. That's what she's going to see. You are a deplorable. Yeah, that's what your. That's what Hillary called you. <laughs> that's your side, okay? That's where you found the word. It's like when you come out of your Democrat phase. Oh wow, what happened? I just don't know. When I came out of my Democrat phase, I was like so ashamed, right? I started coping by saying, "I gotta attack them. I gotta just f talk shit about them." <laughs> sort of every second word was these f Democrats disgusting that's exactly what you are uh piece of shit and that shit hits you know and so i yeah. i have she, that's all of i have from now speech. until she's uh literate to create a relationship with her where she knows me more than this this idea who i am in the public you know when that hits, like you, like you say, because it's funny, man. I, I, I just went through something like that with my kids, because my kids can fucking read now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, what, what, what's there, man? Do you, do you see an opportunity in that? Yeah. What is it? I'm, I, I picture for myself a Christmas with a bunch of people I done helped. There you go. That's what I envision for myself. It's not, you know, I, I used to judge my worth by the films and stuff, and like I think about my Christmases during that whole path it was just so f solitary and lonely or it'd be like this new girl and that girl. i mean it was always like some f like very um in intangible vapid vapid no yeah. intrinsic value nobody that could like, <laughs> vapid. like i imagine that they're trying so hard to sound smart and it's so pathetic because you're an actor you can remember scripts why don't you remember a better script there's dudes I'm working with now that I got 597 days of, of this program I'm in. And um, I got monks at my house. You know, I look around sometimes at my house, even now, and I think, what? Yeah. Like, how? Yeah. You know, how did this happen? Yeah. And uh, yeah. what kind of, how much rehab do you need to bring monks home? This is the Avatar Aang, right? This is, uh, uh, we found him in Bossing Se, and this is, it's like, dude. If a monk is in your house, is he even a monk? <laughs> He's like on the couch chilling. That's <laughs> so fucking stupid. You're being insensitive, John. To who? To the monk? <laughs> Change the channel. <laughs> the Hollywood is just so fucking gone, man. Maybe if I, I, I want to go to live with monks in the monastery, but what if I just brought them to the crib? Mm. So I don't want to leave the crib. We got the bong, we got the volcano bong, and we're doing dabs. What if we brought the monks here? Right? You think they'd come? Oh, yo. New text, bro. Hey, I got this. Oh, Shia, Shia. Yeah, the girls aren't coming, man. Yeah, bring them, bring them, ask the monks. Okay, the monks are coming. They're on their way. They just got on a plane. This is, just, this is actually like, how come no one makes comedy about how pathetic the ruling class is like that they cope with bringing monks home and shit um i think it's the relationships i think my daughter will be able to when it does come time for her to be able to assess who her father is <laughs> she... dalai lama playing fortnite on shia's couch <laughs> you'll see a man who failed yeah. was a sinner was honest about it that's it took accountability for it and then made course corrections that's it changed look 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 die in chat says john you're projecting on them they aren't even saying anything wrong you relate to them that's the difference that's why you're not critical of these people they got your ass by talking like this and talking in a 
I'm talking like this and I use the word vapid and uh, I'm going through things too. When I got off the Lolita Express with Jeffrey Epstein, I found out that I miss my daughter, right? I miss her as much as those other little girls that I was with. Like, come on, man. Like, you instinctively defend ruling class and you got the broke f me on your side and you don't relate to our chat. These people would kick you out of their house. They'd say you're a freak, man. And then gave his life to something bigger than himself and found solace in a, a program of principles, service, love. You know, that's, that's where I'm aiming at. So I think it'll be a Christmas one day where she just wakes up and goes, damn, dad's got a lot of friends. Who are these people? And my mommy will say like, you know, dad had a hand to play in like these people finding the same thing he found. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I, mm -hmm. I'm hoping mm -hmm. for, you know? Not if, but when she falls, so because everybody for? does, man. Sure. You're, you're going to be able to coping. talk about it with her and you're going to be able to be there with her. The reason I've always connected to you is because, you know, you have depth and weight because you done fell on your face, you know, Definitely. and then got back up and kept it moving. And, you know, this is people who haven't gone through that. They don't have depth and weight to the, the message that they have. to. The most pathetic cope I ever hear is, yeah, but John, you used to be a bad person fighting people and a drug dealer. People don't have what you have. Like you went through that. So you're better than people because you changed it. At what point is it just discrediting the people who never fought? Isn't it the greatest cope ever that we champion the damaged, the damaged souls we have to champion? Like, there are people who just got their shit together and didn't have to do real shit, right? And that's my most hated thing is like people coping with their mistakes. No, my mistakes are pathetic, they're degenerate, they're disgusting. They're everlasting. They're a part of me forever. They damage my internal values. That's not who I am. Right? They they make me cope for the rest of my life. Look how they get excited to talk about their... And you're going to be able to be there with her. The reason I've always connected to you is because, you know, you have depth and weight because you done fell on your face, you know, Definitely. and then got back up and kept it moving. And, you know, this is... People who haven't gone through that, they don't have depth and weight to the, the message he, that they have. There, he's always trying to take away from people like Khabib. He's always, you didn't, this is what all addicts do. Yeah, but Khabib never went through the addiction of drugs. He, they never came through that. What the fuck? They always romanticize their suffering. Nobody cares about your pathetic drug suffering, bro. Literally nobody cares. Literally, there's LA hoes who go through what you go through. It's not that spiritual my dude okay and they always cope with well khabib was just never tempted what the f got a hundred million dollars of course he was they just cope man they cope and we champion copers because we're coping they have to share they mm -hmm. can tell you all about what to do and how you're supposed to do it but very few people have the life experience and this child is a big part of that you know there's a lot of miracles that have taken place in my life just in this short period of time that, that, that takes me out of this belief phase into like, oh, I can touch it. Solid. Yeah, it's, this feels very real. So, you know? And I, I played with faith. You know, when we did Fury, I was toiling with faith, mm -hmm. but it was all like the purpose was performative. What was your, it was, it's about intentionality. Right. Right, to be good in a movie. Right. Not to save yourself or save somebody else. And when I f***ed up in the past, it's like, you know, you get a call from Brad Pitt, what f up? You know, there yeah. wasn't no calls this time. Yeah. Yeah. My mother didn't talk to me this yeah. time, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. nobody, all yeah. my, all my friends became. Well, if your mother doesn't talk to you and you're a grown adult, you're a failure. You're pathetic. You're a loser. Nobody likes you. That's the truth about you. Can't even get your mommy on your, can't even get the peanut butter jelly sandwich lady on your side. It's a, you can't get the lady who always had your back on your side. How how degenerate have you become? Like, what have you become? I don't care how bad your mom is. Like, to not have your mom as a cheerleader has got to be the... To me, that's the hardest thing to ever do. How can someone even do that? How pathetic are you? Became acquaintances 
the antithesis of being a friend is walking away. I am not going to walk away. Like, mm -hmm. I am always going to love you. I am always going to support you. Mm -hmm. That being said. Notice they can't stop acting. You're so right about that. Who said that? They, uh, he'll, 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 what a stupid name in chat. That fucking with the orange name says they can't stop acting. That's so true. They can't stop structuring their words in a, I'm professional, I'm elite, I'm responsible, I've had, I've been through stuff, but I'm telling you what to do to get over it. They can never actually be vulnerable. They can never actually be vulnerable, ever. You are still an idiot, John? Yeah. How about that? How about that? Said the things that, you know, this person said, like, I can't, I can't f with that. For and sure. like, and like what you said, you were right, man. Like I've, I've hurt people in my life, you mm -hmm. know, like I know what that is. I know what it's like to be in that valley. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be left behind. Um, I don't know what it's like, you know, to put my hands on a woman or for a woman to say, I put my hands on her. Mm -hmm. And, and that's something I, you, you know, like, but no, I've never put my hands on a woman. But I cannot tell you how many times they put hands on me. That's what's so crazy. It's. I've been around crazy bitches my whole life. Whose fault is that? Is that is that not my fault? Why would I blame crazy bitches? My brother don't go through that. That has to be my fault. No matter what the, the case is my job as your friend is to in whatever way you allow me to or you allow me to be a pro part of that process is to make sure one you never do it again mm -hmm. make sure two that 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 you're in a healthy process and, and, and number three that i'm a support system for why you're going through that mm -hmm. um so i guess my question with that is man is like where i mean you answered it a little bit but where are you and what do you what for for people who support you and love you mm -hmm. like what do you want to say to them yeah i mean i got amends to make i got a long list of people that i need to make amends to and so um what i want to say to those people is i i one i get it you know it doesn't seem you know when it first hit it was like you know i wanted to air it out and talk about specifics and like none of it really matters you know i, I hurt that woman you know and in the process of doing that i hurt many other people and many other people before that woman. You know, I was living my life. Um, I was a pleasure-seeking, selfish, self-centered, dishonest, uh, uh, inconsiderate, fearful human being. And I was operating on a, on a survival instinct. I wasn't operating as a friend. I, I didn't actually, all my loves and friendships were transactional. You know, I f***ed you because we worked together and I experienced great pleasure in that working situation. You know, uh, when I look back at the friendships who people who who dipped or don't talk to me, these were also part of the same kind of transactional relationships. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually understand what love was. You know, I didn't know what friendship was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do a pity party thing. I was raised very specifically mm -hmm. in, in, in my father would tell me stuff like, you know, your life is your life. So please get back to Freemasonry. These are their puppets. This is even richer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to have a good life, you got to work real hard. You got to get into a good school. You got to get a good job. That'll lead to a good relationship. You have a kid and you put that kid in a good school. And, then, you know, it's all up to you. And so that kind of. It forced me into a position in my life where I was God. I was the person. This is so cringe. And who was making shit happen. Mm -hmm. And, um. And I was using people like, like, like I was um, in a laboratory measuring shit and like, um, quite controlling. I mean, you know how I am on set too. You know the way I was. When I was in the most satanic phase of my life, punching dudes against their temple when I won the fight, and they're like on one knee coping. When I was the most cocky, the most god hating, I still never said I am God. Because I knew, even at my most satanic form, how stupid that is to say. It's just cringe. It's just like, yeah. It's just the greatest cope I ever hear. Operating on set was, 
the actor is the poet. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Like you're in a solitary, you're on your own like mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. That's a bunch of nonsense, but this is what I was living in. It's mm -hmm. the shit I came up with, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the actors that I looked up to, the, the art that I was inspired by, uh, they moved like the actor is the poet. I was moving like in my life like I was that way. Right. That does something to the way you operate in the world. Yeah. Some people are attracted to it because that confidence is attractive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it feels comforting to be around somebody who... who Every time we go over content, it's men seeking masculinity. They just talk in circles, trying to find it. They're like, what if I can get one masculine sentence? If I could just get one masculine sentence in the whole podcast, what if it gets clipped? It's hope. It's, they do nothing for their real live selves. They don't even believe in a mental plane of masculinity and a feminine plane. They think this is like... Oh, it's with the wind. It's with the wind. I'll be masculine tomorrow. Today I feel like gyno. Well, no, because gyno, th gynocentric thinking puts you in f rehab. Okay, there's no order to that. <clears throat> you think knows something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's attractive. It it calms my own insecurity to be around a, a person who who is fully acquainted and uh, acclimated to their craft or their mission in life. When somebody's really confident in something, it's nice to be around that energy because it feels like guidance. It feels like you can lean on it. Yeah, they got to figure it out. They got to figure it out, right? So I get why, why I'm, I'm, I empathize with why my way of doing shit was attractive then. Mm -hmm. And I remember who you were on that set. Mm -hmm. I remember how fearful, how deeply insecure, you know, and- For sure. And the way that you were moving on that show specifically for sure. and then the yearnings for david to hit you with certain compliments and shit like you know you needed validation mm -hmm. from him for sure from us mm -hmm. from kevin mm -hmm. more so from kevin mm -hmm. you know oh. and like the military dudes sure. you constantly needed them to co-sign all your shit all the time and mm -hmm. i i empathize with that but that's not who i was i was not that way in life mm -hmm. uh the way that I felt about craft and life in general was, I don't give a f what you think, you know? I don't care what you think about me. I had come from an environment with very little... Um, Is there a reason why he keeps using the word craft, like witchcraft? That's like a Masonic terminology. Like, I think he understands his influence as an actor. You know, I love the movie Fury. It's got some badass fight scenes too. But corny, dude, right? I love that they added a Mexican guy in the tank because it just shows how far Hollywood will go to be inclusive, right? And you got to always be curious about an industry that always says, hey, we're not ra Hey, we're not racist. Hey, we're not this. Because then, you know, Weinstein and all that stuff comes out and it turns out they are racist. They are racist. They are anyone who's ever saying by the way i'm not racist by btw out of the blue right doing a world war ii epic right starring a bunch of black guys not racist six black guys world war ii it's time yeah we do it a th we did three thousand black guys for a world war ii epic just to prove we're not racist dude <laughs> who the f accused you that you're trying that hard what happened cheerleading going on and so i created a sort of uh, survival instinct right. where i would cut people out you know and, and minimize opinions and the way that i would do that is i had to i had to believe that my opinion was gra greater than everybody else's opinion around me i remember i remember talking shit to spielberg mm -hmm. i mean there was no director who ever directed me you know and and i used to be proud of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is what i mean like my the the things that I looked up to and romanticized was I came up on a certain kind of music, a certain kind of culture, boss shit. You know, the guys I looked up to were not asking you what you thought. Mm -hmm. I thought it was something. There was something sexy and punk rock about like these islands, mm -hmm. these men who were islands, untouchable. Yeah, is that possible? Is it possible to be that? It's nonsense. Yeah, it's just not real. This this the it's um it's fiction. It's not a real. Well, it's thing. a it's a blanket, right? I mean, it's armor. I listen to Mickey Rourke interviews and I think, damn, bro, that's a sad boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You scared man. Mm -hmm. You're so f scared, mm -hmm. you know? And there's a lot of this tough guy armor shit. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Mm -hmm. you know? And I love Mickey Rourke. Mm -hmm. You know, I, he gives me hope. Mm -hmm. 
when you see a dude go for 12 years no craft and then come out and, and do the wrestler, wrestler yeah. a guy like me who's in my position looks up to shit like okay. that it gives me hope it for makes that. me feel inspired like all right if i'm patient for 12 years maybe one day guys like me in my position need stories like that and simultaneously i listen to his interviews and i go there's no uh, evolution here there's no you're still shitting on tom cruise bro right. like right. why right and it's insecurity right you know and i was that way i was so competitive my acting wasn't collaborative it was competitive mm -hmm. it was a sport mm -hmm. and my life was this way mm -hmm. and this is what created tom cruise is the only actor i like from the whole masonic cult i love tom cruise because he's the only dude who did one good thing one thing and he went after <clears throat> Big Pharma and uh, the mental health profiteers. That was the coolest shit I've ever seen an actor do. And then he pussied out. He stopped. But I thought the attempt was like noble, right? That was the coolest thing he ever did. The insecurity and the jealousy that put hands on this woman. Mm -hmm. the, the man that was involved in that relationship. Yeah, I do love Keanu too. I wonder if the, the Keanu, what if Keanu's a pedo? Thoughts on Jason Statham? The guy's really good looking. Right? But I don't know much about him. But, like, talk about going bald the right way. That guy's pretty cool. I don't know, because when I search these guys up, they turn out to be, like, fanboys. So, like, I'm afraid to research them. I know he broke the barrier. He can be good looking and bald. It's, it's intense. Relationship was co constantly comparing himself to other people. Mm -hmm. And I was a dishonest person in that I was wearing this mask. You know, I, I've i gotten cold sores my whole- Does anyone else think he's still wearing a mask here? That this is his reform acting phase? Life. Got him from my mother. I get two cold sores a year when I'm stressed out or I'm sick. I never told any of my sexual partners about getting cold sores. Never. And that's something, when you talk about like, how do you, what, you know. So he's talking about herpes right now, but he's afraid to say it. How do you, how do you talk to these people who you don't f over? Like, there's certain shit you can't clean up. Yeah. You know, you can't make amends for permanent damage like that, you know? And so, my daughter now has become this opportunity for yeah, me, yeah. you know, and every woman in my purview has become an opportunity for yeah. me to be like a stand up dude. Yeah. I used to open doors for women. Yeah, I, I used that. to, you know, I was a good dude that way, yeah. but it was almost performative. Yeah. It was almost like, I'll do this good thing so you can think I'm a good mm -hmm. dude. Mm -hmm. But like in my own private life, when mm -hmm. the doors were closed, mm -hmm. I never told any woman I had cold sores, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's, that's, deplorable behavior mm -hmm. you know when a woman would like me it felt like so f foreign that i didn't want to f it up and i always thought that a woman being into me was tied to this business so like i think about why the business and the, the industry was so important for me and it really has news flash it it is it's the only reason the only reason women are with you is because you're in that no woman wants to kiss that disgusting raccoon face my dude okay i'm a different case i'm extremely good looking right so when i get used for clout they'll still eventually be like well you know he's really cute but with this guy this guy they're always gonna think this is the, i'm dating a f racket it's almost little very little to do with the craft itself and the spiritual nature of what the craft can be for a great swath of time it had to do with this is how i how I define myself. This is where I build my ego mm -hmm. so that I can go in and pursue these, the, these, these things that will, um, these feelings that will absolve me from the very real feeling that is continual loneliness and the feeling of being not enough yeah. and the feeling of constantly comparing yourself to other people. And what that does in a relationship is it makes you it makes you controlling and fearful and manipulative.
To not tell somebody you get cold sores twice a year is, is, the, is a heinous manipulation, you know? Um, but I never came up with a dude who was like, hey, this is how you navigate that right, situation. Right, 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 right. Nobody right. hit me to- Is this guy a beta? game like hey bro you know if you're really in love you yeah. can have open conversations about uncomfortable yeah, shit right. and really get to like another kind of connection you don't even know about or if somebody was trying to tell you weren't in a place to, to, to receive it anyways I mean maybe I, somebody I tried, yeah, yeah I wasn't you know, and and I, I get look you, you you said whether it was through you know drinking or whatever the fuck was that you, you you hurt people that are are close to you yeah yeah uh, that really that really resonated with me man and, and and i'm just wondering um i mean people who who put their whole shit on the line to like bring me back from the fire mm -hmm. you know alma harrell is a great example of mm -hmm. a person who she took a gamble on me you know i was in rehab when we started having a conversation i got arrested in georgia for fighting with a cop wound up in rehab and uh didn't hear a damn thing about God, spirituality, personal growth, accountability. My whole, as soon as I got to rehab was, let me get back to this hustle. Mm -hmm. So I started writing a script in rehab. That's how mad I was. I, I wasn't listening to no therapy. I had been therapized my whole life that it felt like you want me to focus on the problem? Well, how am I gonna like, how am I gonna hack this mm -hmm. focusing on the mm -hmm. problem thing? Mm -hmm. And how am I gonna find my way back to this hustle so I can get back to my ego? Mm -hmm. Cause really all I cared about was my ego. I didn't give a fuck about getting well. Yeah. You know, it was all about get well for you. Yeah. Get well for the camera. Get yeah. well. And so, you know, Honey Boy was born in this kind of toxic milieu of false recovery, uh, false recovery masked as some kind of like uplifted product. Uh, um, and she was in on it because she thought that it was, I mean, I don't know what her motivations were, but it felt like she was she was doing kind of what you're doing here. When the conversation first started with Alma, it was like, man, we got to get to the root of what the f is going on here. You know, something wrong with you. You know, let's get well. It was out of love. It was out, out of, of love. love. Like y'all with each other. You made stuff together. I love you. What yeah. can we do? It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't let's build a product. It wasn't <laughs> fetishizing product when we first, she didn't, it wasn't. John, I thought you would like Shia. <clears throat> Why? Why would I like any, anyone from Hollywood? Why? I don't even like streamers. Why would I like this guy? It wasn't like I was in an environment yeah, where she's like, yeah, Academy Award. Yeah, 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 let me, yeah, let me go yeah. hit you up for a script yeah. idea. It yeah, wasn't yeah. that. <laughs> she hit me up like, hey, I'm in the same, I'm, I'm living a principled life. All because he's the goat, the goat of cope, the goat of hating Donald Trump, the goat of what? Huh? The goat of rehab? The goat of changing diapers? What is he the goat of? I want to know. Also, maybe you should get, you know, get, get involved in this thing. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was on a, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, here's a 60 page monologue I wrote about my dad while I was doing this fourth step, you know, and right away, it was almost like I manipulated her into mm -hmm. directing mm -hmm. this movie. Mm -hmm. And then that put me in a, in a situation where I was even sicker. Cause then self will is run riot in full. Cause now I'm at Sundance. We just done one Sundance and I'm like thinking that I can like, that I'm the ultimate uh, manipulative master and I was and I was telling other people who would come to me after seeing that movie asking me about how to help and I would tell them well you just got to paint with your pain mm. you know and all this f nonsense mm. it just wasn't mm. I had no spiritual life mm -hmm. none the I, fact that the, the fact that your done. spiritual life at that point was bankrupt and the fact that that, that, that came out of a transactional uh, less than weak part of you if that's if that's what you're saying here, yeah is it still possible that through the art that you made that that is Men are so pathetic, they find God through trauma, right? Something has to happen to a man where he just needs a spiritual life. <clears throat> Let's just use logic, dude. Who put you on earth? Who put mankind on earth? Okay. Oh, it's just a random one. Or we're just on a rock flying through space, dude. Like, it's enough of the cope. Stop running from responsibility. Stop coping. It inspired people or helped people. It's it still could have. Oh, I know it has. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Uh, and, and I don't think, and I don't want to get too um, spiritual, uh, too uh, too much God talk in here because I know that it landed like on deaf ears when I wasn't ready. But yep. God uses people <laughs> in in many ways, and I've interacted with people, and Alma has interacted with people who that movie has has had a, a hand in helping them find their way back to the route. Yep. You know and. Yep. And um, that's very fulfilling. Yep. So I, I can't deny that, that that craft and art is a huge 
instigator in people. You know, when you think about Catholicism in full, you know, beauty is a huge part of the religion. That's right. Art has a huge uh, hand Music, in pain, evangelizing people Absolutely. and bringing them to God. And Absolutely. so, but there's also been some real toxicity and some morally bankrupt things that use that art in order to draw people in for own personal gain and for weak parts of those people. Which is where I was. I, and, and I think, man, you know, it's you know, when I think about you, you have this ability um, to inspire and to. Get Do you think God actively engages with reality? No. What the f are you talking about? You know what God means? You know how big that word is. You know how big infinity is? Dude, your problems, my dude, you gotta handle them yourself. This is cope. God this, God that, I need God for everything. You need God for the health of your family, the health of your mind, and the grace before a meal. That's it. There's no wish career. I need a better career from God and <laughs> casting couch with God. And there's nothing else there. The rest is all you. That's it. <clears throat> You're coping. I need God for everything. You need God to wipe my ass. And why the f did he give you hands? Did you pray before you went viral? Yeah, I did. But my prayer was for my family. And the last few seconds was about a career. And I haven't prayed since because I didn't know that one would work. So, felt I, to this day, when I talk about that, you can sense how guilty I feel. Like, it is pretty cringe. I'm not going to lie. But I was also wanted. Like, people wanted to kill me. So, it was kind of like a way out. I was going to get killed on Granville Street. Make no mistake about that. It was like a desperate prayer too. Yeah. I had a black eye in the shower when I prayed. All right. Galvanize and ignite people. You can make people feel um, enormously strong and powerful and 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 joyous i've also seen you completely uh, humiliate people yeah i've seen you um completely destroy the joy in, a, a, you, in you know in an environment yeah. you know and that's and 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 i think these things you know what's something that's so embarrassing to leak <clears throat> I find more God watching evil than I do watching good. Knowing these guys are on Epstein's Island really puts things into polarity for me of like good and evil, right? Don't know why, can't explain that. I have no idea when people are like, why are you such a madman for conspiracy and you just dig like a dog? It's kind of like truth digging. Truth is the language of God and I need it right now. But it is soul searching. It is, right? It is looking for the universal mind, right? But most people finding out how evil the ruling class is actually pushes them away from God. So like when I do these streams, most people go, why would God allow that? So it's like I'm, do I'm having the opposite effect. It's kind of hilarious. Right? Like if evil was more in the shadows, it would be very hard for me to ever think of God. Right? But it's because it's so blatant and it's so in my face. And could you imagine a greater war isn't the greatest war us versus these ruling, disgusting pedocrats? Isn't that like, I live for this war. I love it. I, I This is exactly what I've been searching for my whole life. I said, hey, God, I can't do that peaceful thing, man. I can't do that priest-like shit. I can't do that. I need a war, man. I think I'm satanic. I need a war. And God's like, then go after those globalists. 
and build your army. I was like, oh, thank God I get to fight. Thank God. And it's really just coping with your masculine spirit. But without this war, I would be, dude, I would be like this loser on TV. This guy got no war. They're, they're cousins, man. Like, you cannot have one without the other. And it is a constant, I think it is a constant work. It is a constant mission. If you are going to try to, if you're going to try to walk the path where you're trying to live. Also, every jihadist thoughts. Look how you instinctively, you instinctively defend Epstein Island ruling class. Notice that you're trying to paint me as like ISIS. Yeah, bro, this is my jihad. Some people are like, you're just jealous of the billions of dollars they have, right? Maybe you're just jealous. That's even better. If my war is a petty war, that's way better. Then I, I'll be a thorn at their side that's just petty. There's nothing spiritual about it. That's even better, right? I don't mind that at all. You can say that. You can say I'm jealous. I don't mind that at all. <clears throat> Have you ever felt like you lost your masculine spirit? Yeah, every time I left the nightclub through the back door because I knew I was going to get jumped, I, my stomach would turn and I'd start to puke from cowardice, right? Because it's one thing to feel cowardly as a civilian, but if you've been in one-on-one -on -one street fights and you always won, you always won the fight, then you're running. It's not like a peasant running from a battle. You feel like a knight with armor that's running. It's a way worse feeling. So yeah, I've, that, those I would cope by smoking weed and like smashing chicks every time I did something cowardly. But it wasn't cowardly, you know? It's like, you're not gonna fight 10 guys. Yeah. What's the most satanic thing you've ever seen in a club? Uh, do, well, I'm a simple guy. So it's like when men buy women drinks, right? That's right then I knew the feminine spirit is evil. Live for positivity. You're trying to bring people up because that doesn't go away. That shit will never, ever go away. For and sure. it's constant work. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you, every time I saw a dude get stabbed outside of a club, it's because of a lady. Like, they would rile up the boys, the boys would take it too far, and the ladies would be traumatized and being like, I need therapy for what I just saw. And it was, like, can't explain to you how many times it's the woman's fault. Because it's like, she knows she's dealing with demons, these guys got face tattoos, like, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Like, these are some caged demons that, that women are just unleashing. Dating in 20 years will be just like Tokyo right now. Most people are marrying VR, virtual reality, whatever. Marriage is dead as an institution. That's what dating will be in 20 years. Like, look in Tokyo. Look what's happening in Tokyo and how men are coping without women. That's the future, man. The thing that I was tripping out on is like, is you saying how you hurt people close to you. That That's also, I, 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 you know, we've talked about it. I definitely understand what it's like to hurt people. I've hurt people. I've hurt people in ways I have, I, I, I'm disgusted with myself for what I've done. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't hurt people that, that, that are close to me. I can't imagine what that's like. And I want to know, first, I guess I, I, I want to know, how does that? You haven't hurt people close to you? That's what you're selling us? So what's the point of building up the fact that you've hurt people? Like you hurt the producer of the movie? Like what, what do you mean? And is that really hurt if they're not close to you? Like why do you have to do that illusion of I'm the good guy? close to you that that's also I, I i you know we talked about it i definitely understand what it's like to hurt people i've hurt people i've hurt people in ways i have i i i'm disgusted with myself for what i've done yeah um i i haven't hurt people that 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 are close to me i can't imagine. how have you are you're 40 years old you've never hurt someone close to you <laughs>
Dude, he's going with the I'm sinless thing. It's so pathetic. Imagine what that's like. And I want to know, first, I guess I, I, I want to know, how does that feel? Do you know that you're doing that while you're doing it? Look, Shia LaBeouf is shocked that the guy's lying to his face. Look. I want to know. Look at it. Look at Shia's face. I feel so bad for Shia now. Definitely. You know, it's like you open up to someone and they high road you as you're opening up. <laughs> this is so I understand what it's like to hurt people. I've hurt people. I've hurt people in ways I have. I, I, I'm disgusted with myself for what I've done. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't hurt people that, that, that are close to me. I can't imagine what that's like. And I want to know, first, I guess I, I, I want to know, how does that feel? Do you know that you're doing that while you're doing it? And what is the realization? Like, what, what, is the real, what does that feel like to, to know you've done that or to know you're doing that? Yeah, I mean. Uh, so oh, he's handling the cringe well. Jazzer got be honest, you probably wronged the random viewer and felt really bad for it. What are you talking about? I've never gave a f about what happens to my viewers. What the f are you talking about? If a dude streams 15 hours a day giving you advice and you do the opposite, I'm glad your life is going wrong. I'm glad you're suffering, okay? <laughs> right? If, if I'm speaking all day and it all falls on deaf ears, and you took it the wrong way and you just changed what I said. And like, I'm glad you're f***ing up your life. What the hell? This is all my, most of my viewers will watch me live my life and say how I live my life and how based it is. And they'll challenge it and challenge it and challenge it. Then they'll f*** off, destroy their lives and come back and be like, hey man, shrooms, shrooms isn't good and I shouldn't have let my girl get banged by that other dude in front of me. Uh, it turns out I'm, I'm, I don't know, it was a bad idea. And it'll be like four months later. And I'll be looking at them in chat like, you know that I don't feel bad for you, no matter who you are in this chat. You know that deep down, I'm glad that happened to you. Because I speak with strong conviction when I say I hate shrooms and cuck shit, right? And if you don't want to listen to that, I'm glad your wife got banged in front of you. I'm glad, right? So there's 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 two uh, perspectives on it. There's where I am now and who I was then. Yeah. And I've had to do a lot of inventory on what was motivating this perspective. Yep. I come from like, and this isn't a boohoo shit either, but I know abandonment. Mm -hmm. I know like deuces. And I uh, would test relationships and as a way of like finding finding a barometer i'd also like I you know what that reminds me of is that flat earth stream i did jill and i faked a breakup on stream and we're like trolling and you know the inside chatter is new like my core subscribers and i like we're like orchestrating the kecks but i thought everyone kind of knew and so we let it run for a bit and there's this guy who got on my stream talking about flat earth i don't know who saw this stream but it was f hilarious the red bull one and he's like, yeah, that's why Jill left you. He's like losing a debate, right? And you know me, I'm like, I'm not going to leak it. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine, right? And everyone's like, oh, Zerka destroyed. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'll take it, I'll take it. And then as we're talking, he says, I forgot what I said. I was like, oh, are you married? And he's like, I was, but my wife left me in the middle of the night and never... She never told told me. She just packed her shit up and abandoned me. The love of my life. And immediately then, I was like, oh, that's why he was so stuck on the whole, you, you're the streamer I watch and your girl left you. That's why he was so vicious. That's why he needed that to be true. Because that's his trauma. That's, he sees that in everyone. And the first thing I said to this heartbroken man was, your wife left you? That's pathetic. And my whole chat's like, that is so evil what you said to this guy. And I remember thinking, I'm like, that's how I know I'm not a good person. That I said that to that broken man. Like, completely broken. I could have just said to him, hey, we're not actually broken up. We're actually still dating. I could have made it like nice. 
but I went and gut punched his psyche for life. And people still think I'm a good guy. You know, that's like me taking his petty insult that's not even real. It can't even hurt me. But the fact that he used his trauma as like venom for me, I said, okay, now it's my turn. It's like, why do you leak this? I leak this to say, you know my flaws. That's why when it's like, John, you're not talking very holy today. Dude, I have serious issues, right? I have serious issues. To this day, I regret saying that to the guy. I'm so proud of the story. I'm proud of the evil I'm capable of. Because there's so much pride I feel in getting attacked 1% and returning 99%. I don't, I can't explain to you that. It's like a bully mindset. I just love the fact that if someone says, oh, John, he's mean. I go, well, you're a dumb cunt bitch. I love that about me. That's my favorite flaw that I can't get, I can't come over that. I can't get over that because that, that's the only flaw nobody has. Nobody guards themselves. I guard myself against a boogeyman attack that doesn't even hurt me. I fight ghosts. All right? So when you say, oh, I've heard a viewer, I can't think of what you're talking about, but I'm thinking of that. And I go, that was the most satanic shit I've done to one of my guys. I can never tell when you're being serious or not. No, I'm being serious right now. Some people watch that stream. And dude, it took months for me to forget about it. Because I said, that is so... The idea of I will never lose means I get to hurt someone that bad. Do you know what a divorce really is? Why would I say that to that guy? So it's like I balance it. I'm like, as proud as I am for always guarding myself, even when I'm not harmed, right? It's the most... It's the least godly thing about me, right? When I think of the worst thing about me is vengeance. Do you regret saying that or do you feel bad for him? Or Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I feel bad for the guy. Obviously, that's the only part I care about. Yeah. He took it like a champ. He didn't really, you know, but... Because I'm never a guy about low blows, right? I'm not that guy. I'll go low. If you if you go medium, I'll go low. But to go that low is like really, it's too much, you know? And I've been holding this for months. I was like, I wonder if I'll ever talk about that. And people forgot, you know? People, this was like the daytime stream without you guys. So... He was a box eater, true. Then you aren't really a bad dude. What are you talking about? Well, dude, if you're guilty about something, if you feel guilty for a long time about something, that doesn't mean you're innocent. You think OJ feeling guilty means he's a good guy? That's a weird way to look at it. Did a girlfriend ever leave you? No, I've never been left. But I have felt being treated unfair and it feels like abandonment. So I know what it's like. Like when I say, oh, that girl will leave you, I can really empathize that. Because be, if I give someone the world and they treat me unfairly, to me, that's the same as them leaving me. It's so bad. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's enough to where I can empathize. Like I can actually talk about it, right? Yeah. You've been cheated on, you just don't know it. No, I could go on a lie detector test. I've never been cheated on. I think, 
Because dating means like you're dating them, right? And that means her lips pressed another man's. I've never felt that feeling. But I can feel it if I try hard in my head, right? I can feel it. It's happened to my buddies that I love, so I can feel it. I'm not new to that feeling. But I cannot ever in good conscience say I've been cheated on. That is cope. And it's kind of like a false message, right? It's It has to be a false message. Because if I say, oh, I've been cheated on, I don't think I'd have this level of confidence, man, right? When you run a perfect game, you talk like me, right? Couldn't imagine talking like this if that happened to me. I would talk more in a cope way. You don't think any of your exes... Well, I've only had one girlfriend, but... It's weird, even back in the good old days, like 2015, I've always had their passwords, right? And I used to get their passwords, not for the cheating stuff, but I was a drug dealer. So it was more like I didn't want to go to jail. So I'd always be logged in their shit. And yeah, I never found anything or stuff like that. I mean, the only time I can imagine that happening is on Twitch. You know, everyone's social on Twitch. Everyone DMs each other. I can imagine whole ass behavior on Twitch. But I've never dated on Twitch. I just smashed people. Smashed like a couple years ago and that's it. So I don't know. Hold on. I would hurt people just out of straight selfishness. No, like, there's no intellectual facet to it. Just the fact that, you know, uh, the fact that I cheated on every woman I'd ever been with. You know, uh, the fact that, that directors who put me on, who took me from nothing and put me on, I eviscerated in public life. Even on set, when I would sense weakness in another person on the other side of a scene, I would lean in. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to uplift nobody. I would try to lean in. And it was this constant trying to define myself in the world. It has, it has to do with not feeling enough, you know, all, all, all. Actors battle identity crisis the hardest because they're always acting, right? I don't battle that. I think that's the only healthy thing about streaming is that it does. It's not acting. I mean, it is for most, but like if you do it long enough, you do develop a sense of identity where it's like, that's that guy on the internet. But these guys have to switch characters and sometimes they read scripts about a masculine role and then they're like, I want to be masculine now. Like I did a army movie and now I want to be masculine. And, right? It's like not the real them. All of this comes from fear. Mm -hmm. Just when I have no, I didn't understand masculinity in full, mm -hmm. you know. There um, it is. What I know masculinity to be now is stability. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really have stability if you're running shit. Mm -hmm. All masculinity is, is a wall. That's all it is. That's all it is. Some people got a few bricks. Some people got a fence. Some people got a wall. Some people got a wall with heavy, fiery, roasting archers like me. That's all it is, is a wall around your mental health, your brain. Okay. Most people got a couple bricks and we're like, oh, that guy's like Jordan Peterson is so smart. And that's all it is. And if you notice, masculinity does not shift. Khabib does not shift. His psyche has not shifted. But when your psyche is shifting a lot, you're very chaotic. You're very woman-like. That's why I always say, if you absorb 10 different types of streamers, and they're all different from each other, you have a woman's brain. Like something's completely wrong with you. If you absorb train wrecks, Zerka, Donald Trump, there's a theme, there's a pattern, and it makes sense. But if you like Zerka and his son and this guy dressed in a in a in a fairy dress and XQC, and if you're all over the place and there's no theme to your psyche, there's your thinking has no theme. 
there's no direction there's no arrow what are you becoming are you becoming zirka in a dress listening to hassan what who are you going to become consuming all that right if you're just a dude like you you know how infinitesimally small we don't even know how deep lake michigan is right, you know right, like right. what are you really running if you get your personality from a streamer something's wrong with you well either whether you want to admit it or not you are getting your personality from what you consume period most guys who love and subscribe to me right away they either hear their older brother their dad or their uncle and they subscribe to me so it's not actually them fiending to sound like me it's them fiending for their family. They're fiending to be around their family. That's what it is. That's why when they copy me, I cringe, but I don't like them. Leaf underscore Keith donated $10. Sup Zerka. Sup. IDK if this has been asked before, but I was wondering if you'd ever do a series slash stream of you finding a viewer and training them for a few months to transform their physique to show the process? Ty fam. I don't know. It sounds a little gay. I don't really want to see a shirt. I used to be a trainer and I'm so tired of getting shirtless pics. And, right. I'm more about changing a human psyche. I think... When you change a man's psyche, they come back to your stream and donate a hundred thousand dollars. You change, you give a guy a six pack, and it's, it's not really anything. Frogan asks, "Where do you get your personality from?" My personality is I grew up only consuming Hodge twins, so it's not original, right? All I did is watch Hodge. I'm a twin. I'm a toxic twin, so I watch Hodge twins. So I watched Hodge twins for the longest time which is so funny when their politics became aligned with mine. I was like, oh, thank God. And, um, hmm. What else did I watch? A lot of Dragon Ball. I know there's something I'm missing, man. Um, there's something I just can't remember. I swear I'm not hiding it. I know that I'm not original. I know that for a fact. Um, can't, I can't tell you, man. Yeah. yeah. No, some girl once said that to me. She's like, dude, you are Inuyasha. The way he treats Kagome is how you talk to women. I was like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, probably Inuyasha. I don't know. All I know is, I'm not original. I'm just more original than you. But I don't believe humans are original. That's cope. There's no original human. That's cope. That's straight up cope. Right? Because the day I think I'm original is the day I'm open to being influenced by satanic forces. You have to remind yourself every day of your life you're being influenced to block the influence. The day I wake up and just start consuming media and going, yeah, nothing's happening to my psyche. My dude, if you watch 10 vegan videos, you start defending their arguments for them. Like, it's weird. It's crazy how much influence the internet media guys have. Yeah, but I've never been a religious guy, so I've, you know, never been into that. I've never been, yeah, I don't know where it comes from. Who got you into cigarettes? I had a mentor, a Saudi dude who knew Freemasons in my city. He had a bunch of money. He mentored me. He taught me drug dealing. He taught me all that. And I made a lot of money, or what I thought was a lot back then, and uh, he'd smoke all the time. And I wanted smoke breaks at work to talk to girls, so I would cope and pretend. Like, everyone has trouble quitting smoking. I had trouble starting. In high school, I was trying to smoke to talk to the smoke pit girls with my buddies, and we'd practice. And for three months, we had trouble starting. We kept coughing. So we just said, okay, we're going to puff it. We're not going to inhale. We're not going to inhale any of it. And uh, 
Yeah, yeah. But that Saudi guy got me into like a lot of drinking, cigarettes, gambling, but I never gambled. I, I was more security. But I was always in the casino. I mean, everywhere I went, people thought I was a movie star because I would roll in with like four escorts. And these were my best friends, drug dealers and escorts. And uh, yeah, it was like one bad influence, I guess. I mean, it taught me a lot, though, right? That guy taught me a lot. He was the most masculine dude I've ever met and to this day. Like, I appreciate him. But he destroyed his life, like, completely. He lost everything. And he was the most satanic guy in the city, right? Like, he was like... I remember the first time I said, I'm going to follow this guy around and protect him and do whatever he says. The first time that happened was uh, I got bullied in a nightclub when I started working by some, like, gangsters who had money. And they didn't like the way our security team was running shit, I guess. And they disrespected me, pushed me, all that. And then this Saudi guy who was my new friend, he like left the party because he found out and he pulled up to the club with like six cars. And I don't even know how it fit that many people. 30 gangsters come out of the car and I'm like, oh, fuck, we got to fight these guys. And they surrounded all the gangsters that bullied me and they made them apologize. They put them in the car and took them to their party. They, I have no idea to this day what happened, but it was the first time I ever, ever got any job I ever wanted. Because everyone who saw that was like, oh, okay, Zerka is really in deep with these gangsters. Like he must be blood with them. I wasn't blood with them. I didn't even know who the fuck these people were. But the first time someone had my back like that, I felt like I owe him. And he knew. He'd smoke a cigarette, and he knew he owned me. He's like, this is my new security guard, this young guy, Zerka. And I, I'd go everywhere with this guy, and he'd spend, like, thousands of dollars making sure I'm partying correct and had all the nice women around me and all the satanic shit, right? I've never had someone have my back like that. And he was a drug addict. And... uh yeah, like that was the first time I was like, uh, wow, that's my first friend. Like I've never had a friend before, you know, like a real friend, like a friend backs you up in a fight, you know, like that. And then my life got really easy. Like the whole city thought I was like uh, El Chapo. So everyone picked up drugs for me. I, you know, life became easy. Everyone was afraid of me. Nobody wanted a street fight. I never had to fight again. And, uh, yeah, but it's weird how transactional that was. Cause he did that cause I was his brother, but he really did that cause he needed to like have another guy on the inside. He didn't want, he can't get a 40 year old security guard to be on the inside working for him in the club. So he got the young guy, you know what I mean? Like I was still targeted by the guy, but yeah, that was my greatest influence is this Saudi guy. And he didn't live like a Saudi. He lived like a rapper. This is like very Western. Kind of like he thought he was a rapper or something. But yeah, yeah, that is 100% where my personality came from is that guy. Right? And that's all the guy would do is, a hey, bitch, get me some fucking water with his accent, right? Get me some fucking water and sit the fuck down and do something and stand up and leave. And he'd say weird shit that doesn't make sense. And the hottest chicks you've ever seen in your life, like MK Ultra programming, would follow him. He wasn't even the richest guy in the city. So I'm like, why are they following him? And he just fucking give orders to these ladies and treat them like shit. And they loved him. One of them married him. They had a whole wedding. And every millionaire was trying to get that girl. There was like guys with $20 million who couldn't get the, the, the one girl in the city. And this ugly drug dealer got her just because he was the masculine one. And I was like, whoa, right? And then you can even see when I first joined Twitch. I told everyone, suck my dick. <laughs> it was very like that. But when I, when I realized there's satanic forces, I realized he's going down the wrong path. 
I predicted his ending and yeah, he, he crashed like his life sucked. I don't know if it sucks, but it definitely crashed. I don't know what he's doing now. I'm afraid to check up on him. And right. you're running nothing. Right. And so this idea that if you're, if you're like, uh, if you're boss in your life, you're always going to be in, 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 in a tremendous amount of fear. Mm -hmm. And that and denial, fear, right? And denial. It's just not to. real. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have, you have to deny anybody else's God. You have to deny God in full. And you have to, you know, you fall into this like Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens hole where you're trying to intel intellectualize mm -hmm. everything yeah. and rationalize yeah, everything. You're fragile, dude. We're all fragile. We're all, yeah, but yeah. Then, you, then you get caught up with like, you know, I, I, I hung out with like philosophers and shit. You know, I would backstop uh -huh. all my shit with like these philosophies mm -hmm. like words, you know, mm -hmm. pull, play these word spells on people and uh, was using like performance art to like create this, uh, you know, running word spells, mm -hmm. you know, just there a bunch of nonsense really. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, that all had to do with the very, with, with the same thing that hurt people. It was all about, I had, my propulsion system was, f mm -hmm. my motivations behind the way I was living my life was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know. I, I had to get a new propulsion system. I wasn't looking at life like, how can I be useful to other people? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wasn't looking to be of service to nobody, even cl including a director. I listen to Ethan Hawke sometimes, you know, uh, do interviews about how he looks at the craft. And he's always talking about like, my job is just to be in service of the director. And that's like foreign to me. Yeah. You know, I remember being in service to a director and getting f***ed over. I remember doing movies with certain dudes who like led me down a weird path. And looking back at the project thinking like, nah, man, I was right all along. You were right. wrong. And then I just, I stopped listening right. to any kind of director, right. you know? And that innocent dude who came into the industry with all this wild, wide-eyed wonderment, Wonder, yeah. that disappeared pretty quick. And then it became like, uh, I got around some dudes who I saw work a very specific way. And I thought the answer to this is, the answer to this um having to rely on the infallible man that is the director mm -hmm. is you just don't listen to the director and you just do your own shit because mm -hmm. trust your instincts, buddy, because you're God. Mm -hmm. I remember calling my manager and saying like, what do you mean? I'm God. Mm -hmm. You know, this is really where I was at because mm -hmm. I thought my craft was, was God. I thought love, art, and God all meant the same thing to me. Isn't that's exactly masonry, science, love, art, liberty, equality. That's literally masonry, that you become your own God and you influence others to reach their own Christ consciousness and they become their own gods. And as long as everyone's pursuing liberty, everything's going to be fine. And that's crazy that he's admitting it, right? And, and, and to somebody who's, who's – because I, I understand you're looking at it from two different perspectives. It's where you're at now and where you were, where you were going yes. through it. So for yeah. somebody who may be going through that right now or for somebody who – in Hermeticism, they teach everything you hear is a half truth, right? Like think of even me, so close to God, but so satanic at the same time. I'm a half truth, right? I'm a holy man until you slap me and then God doesn't exist and I'm breaking your teeth, right? That's not correct. That's not it. That polarity is not healthy. That shouldn't exist in me. All they speak about is half-truths. That's why they always speak about God, but they're degenerates behind the scene. Who, you know, maybe is close to somebody who is going through that. Were there ever times of empathy? Were there ever times of realization? Were there ever times of shame when you're like, I just hurt that person? What would you say to that dude? I'll tell you like this. I remember being in Georgia when I was doing this movie with this kid, Zach. You were there for part of it. Yeah. And I remember getting arrested. Yeah. And I remember getting out of jail the next day and I remember sitting down with Zach and there were moments of like, like lucid articulation from this man. Mm -hmm. And this happened to be one of them. And he said, you know, this is my one shot. You make movies all the time, but this is my one shot and you're ruining it for me. Mm -hmm. And to say that you don't feel that when it lands mm -hmm. is not true. Mm -hmm. I felt it deeply, but it's what you do with that feeling. You know, do you change? Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, I, I would always like, I always had an inch left. I always had some f wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time I would f up, there was always some wiggle. There was always a Brad Pitt on the phone. There was always some like, 
you know, Sundance Some Award. Next project. There was always Some Alma. Next. There was always another. There was always wiggle room to get back into ego. Mm -hmm. And this time, there wasn't no wiggle room. That's why I attribute this woman with saving my life because she, she, she destroyed any route towards that wiggle. That's real. It is real. Rock bottom. Rock bottom. Bottom isn't when you experience the worst moment of your life. Definitely. Bottom is when you change. That's right. It's when you actually, t it's when you touch it, when you smell it, when it's right on your face yeah. and you feel it. And it's, it's not about severity of what the thing nah, is. It's about, talking about ass eating. That's rock bottom to these guys. Moment of your life. Definitely. Bottom is when you change. That's right. It's when you actually, t it's w when you touch it, when you smell it, when it's right on your face yeah. and you feel it. And it there's, it's not about severity of what the thing nah, is. It's about, nah. it's it's about what you do with it once it, it happens. So like, once, once, once it happened, I mean, I, when it landed, I forgot how to breathe, you know, because <laughs> the email, the subtext of the email was, your hustle's over, you know, uh, and I forgot how to breathe. And I, the next thing I did after two minutes of sitting there, looking at, staring at a computer screen was I went and loaded up a gun and sat at my table and was going to kill myself. I was at What the f*** are you talking about? Why, why is this so hard to believe? Just the way he says that, the tone is off. Like, it's just, I don't know about that, dude. Out of here. I didn't know what to do anymore. Like, all my ideas had failed. And I sat there for two minutes thinking, where is the wiggle room? I'd already used what's every... What's my play? Yeah, what's the play? Uh, and there were no options. It was like, there was nowhere to go. It's not like I could go outside and get a Choco Taco and chill on the, you know... Uh, people driving down the street, rolling down the window like, you know, this is where I was in the early days of this shit. So I didn't even want to leave my house. And I had a woman living in my house who wasn't my wife. And I was on my way to go do some movie I didn't give a f about, you know, just like momentum building kind of shit. You know, movies, no intrinsic value, just like I need something on the cards, you know, for this year. I need my two or three projects, one of these things. And, um, and I felt disconnected from all of it. And... I wound up getting emails from certain dudes who, who like you, were still involved in my life, even when it got ugly, you know, when it got chunky. One of those dudes was Sean Penn. Their biggest problem is they are stuck in their me and can never tap into their I. There is no will to these people. It's just me, me, me. My shell and who I think I am, who... Who the world, well, no, who the world thinks I am. Everyone knows that's not you. The, everyone knows you're me. There's something else. There's something deeper. Like everyone knows this is not the real Shia. Involved in my life, even when it got ugly, you know, when it got chunky. One of those dudes was Sean Penn. And Sean's like, you need to call Brolin. And I called Brolin and he told me he was going to this meeting online. Now the gun is loaded. Like I haven't left my sitting position, you know? And I wound up signing on to this meeting and I heard one of the dudes who was speaking that night say, uh, if you're new and you just entered, you know, you don't have everything you want right now, but you got everything you need right now. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, now, now. And he did that for like two minutes. And the first minute I'm thinking, you can't spend the whole rest of your share just snapping your fingers and saying now, like this shit is ludicrous. And I went into this judgment, which is what my alcoholism sounds like. It sounds like criticality. It sounds like judgment. And so I'm, I'm in my judgment. Like you better say, and a gun is right here. I'm like, you better say something that's really gonna get me the f out of where I'm at. And after two minutes, like I, I felt like a giggle start to rise inside of me and I felt something like presence. I stopped thinking about the email, stopped thinking about my hustle, the gun almost disappeared and it was like I'm sitting here on this, this, this Skype call and I'm present for the first time in my life. And I want to write in the dude in the chat box like, hey bro, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm on the verge, you know, I, I'm about to He's like, oh, okay, cool, call me tomorrow. Just like throw away. You know, and I needed that. I had been enabled for so long in my life that if it was going to be me walking into this program and having a bunch of dudes pat me on the back like, hey, man, welcome home. Yeah, yeah. We're glad you're here. Yeah, I'd have been out again because yeah, yeah. then it would have been more wiggle room. Yeah, yeah. But the guy that I wound up running into was not having it. Yeah. And he said, hey, man, uh, meet me on the beach tomorrow. And I wound up uh, up here at Tower 10. And he, he said, uh, I need you to get on your knees. And I'm like, I'm not getting on my knees. He's like, cool, deuces. He started walking away. I'm thinking. Oh, but it also reified this like you don't care like you care but not in that way you know you're not going to pat me on my back and i said okay okay i was i was so willing at this point because i was in so much
pain. And he said, it's the wrong guy, dude. Right. The guy you were in the chat box with, he never met you. So that's just a crackhead on the street. Dude. <laughs> okay. That's not the guy. Get on your knees. And I get on my knees. He gets on his knees with me. So right away, it's no longer like this power play. We're like, like collaborating in this. And he says, I need you to stop the waves. And I'm like, ah, man, listen, this Dr. Quinn medicine woman version of this shit ain't going to work with me. You know, like I, I get how this goes. He's like, are you either going to write what happens or you're going to do a bunch of shit that you don't believe in so that your life changes? Because your issue is that you, you need to rationalize everything and you're out of options, son. Like what? If not this, what? And he was right. And so I started saying, you know, stop waves. And he's like louder, man stop waves and he got up off of his knees and he started walking away and i looked back and he's like nah keep going and he, he's like keep saying it again i say stop waves he's like louder bro they're all the way over there you're all the way over here stop them waves man and now i'm yelling and i'm having like an emotional it almost feels performative now yeah. now i'm like back in my bag yeah. back yeah. to like the manipulating hustling like yeah. wiggle room watch finding this. yeah watch yeah. this boom let me let me and then i'm crying and i'm stop waves you know right, like right, right. Uh, i'm in the middle of like right. the the greatest monologue right, of my right, life right, on right, this right, beach right. you know Stanley Kowalski. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. and uh and uh, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes you can stop all that which made me like giggle you know <laughs> I started giggling and then he stood up and he put his hand on my left shoulder and put his hand on my right shoulder and he said welcome to AA and uh it did something to me that felt like like it felt like warrior shit you know I didn't know it felt like 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 man code like g shit it didn't feel like fluffy cute shit book reading sitting in a it felt like you're on a mission yeah it felt it felt purposeful mm -hmm. and it felt sexy mm -hmm. to be honest with you sexy in the way that listening to kevin vance feels sexy mm -hmm. to a young man mm -hmm. who feels like a boy mm -hmm. it felt so rooted mm -hmm. and it wasn't emotional it wasn't performative mm -hmm. he wasn't trying to manipulate me but it was kind of hokey and like the knights which knights in shining armor kind of hokiness that like made me feel like a little kid again and he said i need you to go home and clear out like clear the decks and i'm like nah man like huh for me and i don't know if you felt this way but every woman was the one for me there was never a two if you liked me you were the one yeah. uh, and that had to do with my insecurity and my fear like i didn't have no there was no two or three or i was just dating like like frivolously it was always like this grand hair climbing up the super emotional super uh romantic super uh this fierce romance you know that i was searching there it is i'm telling you everything i say is correct he even makes every girl he dates the one let me tell you something none of them should feel like the one the one is your career your woman is an accessory to your identity. She does not puzzle piece your identity, dude. If you're standing alone or with her, you're still Zerka. If you're, if I'm uh, alone somewhere, I'm not half of Zerka. That's not, that's not it, dude.